Hi folks, here is our entry to the Autodesk Cam Challenge. We started with a pretty big chunk of aluminum that we had on hand from our Tormach fixture plates, but the material was rectangular and we needed it slightly more square. So that's one of the cool things here. First off though, we had to cut it up and we had to be pretty deliberate with the saw on how we cut it. So if all goes well, you can see we'll have saw cut this piece down and glued it together along this seam here. And then we set it up on our haws, use some parallels to lift it up off the orange vices, and we're just machining the back edge to get a straight edge along this piece for when we glue it together. Then we're drilling and boring out two locating holes, which will play a huge role later on in how we get this thing machined accurately and flip it over for the second coordinate system. Then we use that same Loctite glue from the thermal printer project to glue these two slabs together. So the goal is for this to look like it was made from one piece of billing. Next up, super glue technique. Card here to our page on it. It's proving to be just such an awesome workflow for one-offs like this, but also actually has a decent role in, in a form of production. It takes a little bit more time and setup, but it's relatively inexpensive. And if you hot swap fixtures, you can really make it work. Here we're throwing on a couple of Tormach 770 fixture plates onto the Haas just to give us a really nice smooth bed. And we were nervous about using the cast iron table off the VM3, which probably has a fair amount of oil sort of impregnated in it. So we wanted a really clean surface for the super glue to work because we did not want to throw this piece uh, on the Haas when we're wailing on it here in a second. Dropping it down and we had laser cut an MDF template to help us understand how to use the material. Fun little trick, if you're trying to make use of a plasma or a water jet or a laser, you can run that cam out of Fusion 360, but a lot of those machines have their own specific cam, so sometimes you just want to DXF. So one of the quick ways we could do that is to go over, hop into the CAD environment, expand any of your sketches, right click, and just say save as DXF, and you can go straight over to your laser or your water jet or your plasma and run that part. And finally, if the piece did launch itself off the table, if the super glue failed, we did not want to crash through our Renishaw tool setting probe. So we built a little 246 fort around it, which should be able to withstand a pretty big impact. So those two holes that we just probed, that's the key. We're using the Haas G68 coordinate rotation platform. So this part doesn't have to be sitting square and we can automatically update our code downstream of Fusion. So we just post this code as if it was perfectly square and the control updates it. Helpful here, even more helpful for when we flip this part here in a minute. Because right now we're actually working on the back side. So we just wanted to deck it. Then we're gonna do a shallow slot, just deep enough to put a backside chamfer on the part and then finally add that chamfer on. What that lets us do now is we can pull the part off, pull the tape off, flip it over, and now we're able to use those exact same two holes to locate our coordinate system and accurately machine this part from the second side. So new tool for us, it's called the Corloy Pro X. I think it's affectionately known as the Ripper. And it's another one of the tools out there that's able to just absolutely wail on aluminum. We didn't want to use an adaptive strategy to remove all that extra material. So we're using that Corloy Pro X to slot down around the profile of our part 3,000 surface feet per minute, 10 thou feet per tooth. That's about 230 inches a minute. Full slot, taking it in 150 thou step downs. We know we can run this harder, but we're slotting is a new tool. If we didn't want our super glue work holding to fail, at least right now, because we also uh, want to make the deadline for the project and we don't have another piece of raw material here. So we know there's more meat on the bone here. We'll probably do some experimenting later on that. After we finished slotting out the profile, same tool with an adaptive strategy to remove the bulk of the material on the interior of the Autodesk A. Then we're off to the surfacing. So Fusion Friday last week, we covered this, but we're using a various parallel tool paths with a half inch ball end mill to surface or machine this interior section of the Autodesk A. Now over to the boss laser. So one of the things that we love about this is, yeah, we're just having fun, but for, on a kind of a serious note, one of the things that really draws us to what Autodesk is doing with the Fusion platform is they're fusing together different technologies. We're not just machinists here. We're makers, we're entrepreneurs, we're business folks. We need to bring products from ideas to fruition. So being able to pull in ECAD or render or CAM or simulation is 
so awesome and it's really what it's all about. I'm not just interested in the cat package and I'm not just interested in the cam package. That's what gets me excited about what's there now and what's coming in the future. So folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed our Autodesk Game Challenge. Take care. See you soon.